Hi there, traders. This is Brad Gilbert with the Daily Market Insight for Friday, the 22nd of September. All right, there's a little bit to unravel here, so just bear with me. Uh, now, the sort of key heading here, dollar eases after Fed, spurred rise, yen stronger ahead of BOJ. Now, yeah, whatever, right? The, the Fed, I think, like uh, ambushed the market. No one was expecting what they saw. But I think it's. Uh, I think we've seen the reaction. We've seen a massive clean out of positions, and I don't know if it's going to keep going any further because it's more like a one and one more rate hike, and that could be it, right? The market is it was either really extremely positioned poorly or, and missed it completely, which obviously it was because we can see that on the market reaction. But the um, but I think we're almost there, right? So some of the bonds, the short dated stuff. Prices are rising a bit, so the yields just coming back a touch on some of those uh, U.S. bonds. Um, the uh, European and uh, U.K. Uh, prices going up means the yields going down, and that sort of follows the Bank of England. They didn't raise rates as expected. We saw a bit of a clean out here on the downside in sterling, um, but you know what? I, I was I was getting asked yesterday about do I expect the Bank of England to raise rates, and I thought, well, yes. But if you look at their statement, and I did mention this, they did say we expect the next um, inflation level to be higher, you know, oil and everything else that's going on. Um, so they expected inflation to be higher and then sort of drift lower. That's their plan. Funnily enough, me as well, we don't trust the central banks at this point. But I tell you what, that's a big step to going towards what they said in their statement and then what they've actually done. It actually matches up, which is a little bit unique in this day and age. So that gets a lot of respect from the market. Uh, sterling did dip down. It's come back a touch. We've got UK retail sales figures today, right? And we could see more of a bounce back if um, if those UK retail sales figures, well, if they're coming back a bit. The um, Now, so, and this is where it gets tricky, right? Because we're still dealing with the effects of, um, you know, the Fed statement the other day, right? So equity markets... Now, ever since the global financial crisis, the Fed has been supporting quantitative easing, everything to keep these equity markets afloat because that's where all the mums and dads had their cash, right? But you know what? It's time to take off the safety the safety blanket, the safety belt, the seat belt, whatever you want to call it, and belt these things, right? The NASDAQ has been a massive culprit for a massive increase in uh, in, in the equity markets, right? That's massively overdone. If it come over here to the to the dailies, right? Looking at the NASDAQ itself, okay, from 11 and a half up to say 16,000, right? This thing, uh, it's got it's got a long way to go. And, and where did that come from? All this AI sort of, what we'll probably be looking at as junk coming into the future. A lot of money's gone into, into the AI tech space. This is no different to the cryptos, to the dot-com boom, anything else, right? Yeah, sure, the AI's in there, but you know what? It's a glitz and glamour. I can see a massive uh, pullback. And it sort of seems to me like the Fed are looking for a clean out of the equities, right? Because it doesn't sort of make sense otherwise. Now, let's just have a look here. I've, I've overlaid uh, on the daily charts here, I've overlaid oil on the dollar index because there is a pretty close correlation there with what's going on. So you might want to keep an eye on that. If I just come back to the hourly charts, right? The, the US dollar index... Okay, sort of a little bit of uh, toing and froing there. If I just blow that up a bit, right? A little bit of toing and froing yesterday, right? So we had the Fed announcement. Now it's sort of seesawing back and forward up the top here. Now, why is that? Well, if I get the uh, the the major news that came out yesterday, okay, <clears throat> you got to know what you're looking at here. So the US Philly Fed index, minus 13 and a half, below the lowest end of the range. That's a big negative, Right. Now the other red one, which is below or the or the bottom end of the spectrum, there below expectations, that's actually a positive number, right? Less claims, that's a good thing, right? And we've seen a ten thousand dollar change previously have a pretty big impact, but and this is like a twenty four thousand difference. This is where the markets aren't always the same, right? So that's a positive. So a bit of toing and froing there on the dollar. It's always good to know why that is actually happening. But you know what? I think this interest rate hike from the Fed uh, has already been factored in, right? So we've got some things to look at as we go through from here. So yeah, the Fed comments are factored in. Interest rate hike in November. Yep, got it, right? Now we start to focus on 
what's in front of us. Now, the BOJ interest rate decision, with this strong dollar, I can't see them doing anything with um, uh, their policy just at the moment. Inflation, I mean, these things hardly ever budge, right? The um, 3%, 3.1, 3.1 previous, I mean, it's slightly lower on the year on year. Okay, is that, is that a chance to change policy? Probably not. They're sort of screaming about the, the sudden um, increase in prices, right? But the yen is actually more favorable globally, right? It's more affordable. So this actually works for Japan. I don't know if it's just, just a political play that they're, they're working with, but it doesn't make a lot of sense to intervene and make your currency stronger, right? The um, now retail sales figures coming straight off the back of off the back of uh, sorry I just lost my train of thought there off the Bank of England sort of interest rate decision. What are we sort of looking at here? Are the numbers dropping or falling? It's a very tricky one, right? Because if these numbers continue to fall, right, inflation's higher, but retail sales is falling. Well, well, cut that big one off. The um, then you know what they're going to have a situation where they've got high inflation. And, uh, you know, a market that's crapping out, the yields are actually falling in the uh, 10 years. So tell you what, the market is expecting Europe to be still under a huge amount of pressure, but we'll see how that plays out. Canadian retail sales, short-term trade there at best. And then you got some uh, S&P global PMI numbers there as well as we come into the uh, end of the week. So uh, piecing all this together, now, I, I thought as of like like yesterday, hard markets to trade, right? Like we, we've got this Fred, fresh Fed sentiment in the market. Uh, it's sort of blown out things somewhat. The We do have clear short-term trends in the market. Okay, the Aussie and Kiwi sort of a bit more stabilized. That, that had already been hit a, a week or two ago, uh, whereas Euro and Sterling have just caught up. Dollar CAD, well, it's breaking a little bit higher. But uh, nothing super clear. Dollar yen, a little bit of pressure here uh, on the BOJ. I think if the BOJ does nothing, dollar yen starts to climb higher. Um, and dollar Swiss up, euro up. I mean, dollar index up, right? So that's that's the, the main game. Keep an eye on these longer term trends because if if I'm right and the, and the Fed have only got one more sort of hike to go, and this could be the hike that actually crushes the market, right? And then then it's sort of really all the numbers start crapping out. We do have a nice short-term, when I say short-term, long-term line, it's like we've got this new trend in play, which has been in play for a little bit, um, dollar Swiss, dollar index. This gives us a clear target if things do start to turn around, right? Dollar yen's already heading up. Dollar CAD pr primarily sideways. Uh, Euro down, sterling down, Aussie still down and Kiwi down. I'm expecting the dollar to like, I can't see them raising rates, raising rates because it's absolutely going to crush the US economy, right? One more rate hike should do it. This like this longer term trend where the dollar is going up, okay, may stay in play a little bit longer, especially if the European and the UK data keeps coming out weak, right? The central banks dealing with high inflation, especially in the UK and uh, weaker economic outlook, it's it's not a good recipe. But um, the dollar can't be sort of sitting up here by itself. It may be a chance where the dollar actually stays strong because everything else is weak. Only time will tell. But I tell you what, the market is has been a little bit baffled since the uh, Fed meeting the other day, right? So just keep an eye on those equity markets. They are getting flogged. Uh, which I like to see because it sort of cleans out the market, it gives us like it's like a, a bushfire through a forest, right? Initial carnage, but then the regrowth. And that's what we're looking for. We've got stale, like quantity of easing all through the US markets. And it actually screws the natural flow of all these uh, economies up. At, right at the moment, we've got a risk off profile, clear as day. Euro stilling Aussie Kiwi down and the rest of the pairs up. Dollar cab the odd one out. So you're going to see that that flow through the US, through the global equity markets, I should say, continue. Keep an eye on the uh, US Treasury yields. If you see, start to see the 10, 20, and 30 years start to, uh, the price start to rally, that means the yields are falling. The US dollar is going to roll over, right? And that's what I, that's what I think is going to happen. It's like clear as day. Um, and that's it, guys. That's uh, that's all I've got at the moment. It's um, been an interesting week with the Fed. 
the uh, just follow the trail of the numbers. If I can just get up the uh, economic calendar there. So, and that's all you can do. Like, there's nothing we can we can't force things to move where we when we want to move them. Um, actually, if anything, let me just come back and just show you the dollar CAD charts. Keep an eye on the CAD yen crosses, right? Uh, CAD yen, oh, CAD yen. I mean, the, the yen crosses, CAD yen actually had a nice move to the downside. A little bit tricky, like oil is starting to move down here, but uh, it did sort of have a bit of a spike. But I'll tell you what, we're starting to see some uniformity across the yen cross, across the yen crosses. The uh, bit of a mouthful there. So, you know what? Is this a precursor to the BAJ doing something? I don't know, but I'll tell you what, the market is actually still nervous about what the potential is for the BOJ. Maybe it's a bit more jaw burning. Maybe it's a slight change. Who knows? But but it's sort of in play at this point. Okay, guys, that's it for me. Uh, pretty much time to almost start focusing on next week. We've got this is this Fed clean out, by the way, is don't, don't think of it as a bad thing. Like coming into next week, it's it's a flush out of a lot of stale positions, makes for better trading conditions uh, going forward. All right. Okay. Have a good one. All the best. Cheerio.